What's going on guys and welcome to who to sign for. Now in this series I'm giving you my recommendations on what players to sign for a specific team in career mode. Before we go on I will say that the signings you will see aren't designed to be realistic and that the player ratings and potentials of the players may vary depending on what database you're using and how they perform for you during the season. Obviously you don't have to follow all the tips. This is really just a set of guidelines to give you a hand if you're stuck for ideas and want some suggestions on what players you can sign for a certain club. This is mainly aimed at those of you out there who may be new to the game I just need a little bit of advice or for those you're out there who want a few recommendations on what players to sign for a team that you may be using in career mode this year. So in today's episode of Who to Sign For, guys, we're going to take a look at the Arid Visa side, Feyenoord. Yes, Feyenoord, of course, uh, operating in Rotterdam, absolutely beautiful Dutch city uh, at the iconic De Quip Stadium. I, I believe they're thinking about building a new stadium because it, um, you know, to make it more modernized, if you will. Uh, but Feyenoord in the game, there are four four-star team. They've got a budget of around 12 to 12 and a half million and the objectives in the first season, I would say a reasonable quarterfinals of the Dutch Cup uh, finishing in the top two in the Eredivisie. That's qualifying for the Champions League in the Eredivisie. There's only two Champions League spots, the winners and the runners-up as well. And the Europa Conference League, well, that's been uh, set as reached a final in the first season. And of course, final have done that. They're taking on Roma tomorrow, Jose Mourinho's side in the inaugural Europa Conference League final. So, yeah, I'd say those objectives are what you'd call reasonable, reasonably challenging, but also definitely doable as well. So, again, final side, it's a four-star team. Uh, they're one of the most successful teams in Dutch football history. They've won the Eredivisie, I believe, 13 times. They've, they've got a good reputation for developing decent young talent, and you'll see in the game as well, they've got some really decent young players to look out for. You've got the 16-year-old attacking midfielder, Milamba, Sinistera, the Colombian winger who is just absolutely amazing on this game. He's 21 years old. He's got fantastic potential as well. It's a solid team and definitely all some decent young talent to build for the future with, including your man between the sticks, Justin Bailo as well. Surely going to be Netherlands number one for many, many years. Um, but for players with final, I would recommend shifting on about five names on the transfer list, including Turnstra, who's been at the club for a long time now. I definitely would sell him, plus Nago. Uh, uh, the right midfielder as well and a couple of others as well. You'll notice with final, they've got quite a few new players in for this season, so you might find a few players in the team who you're not too keen on, but unfortunately, as they've just arrived, you might not be able to sell them in the first season. you have to swap them, uh, including the uh, the former Hibernian goalkeeper, who's now their backup as well. But there are a few players you can sell in the first season, and Terran Strat, I definitely would recommend selling as well. He's been in the club for a long time now, I believe since 2014. Long time anyway, but he's now 32 years old. He's only going to decline in ability. I would put him on a transfer list right away. You can get around four to four and a half mil for him. I would take the money and run and look to reinvest that in a new midfielder in this team. Now, final do have Koku through the middle of their park and I'm sure you know about if you play FIFA career mode. He is one of the best young CMs you can buy, but as they play a 4-3-3 attack, it means that one of the midfield trio is slightly further forward. I would look for a new playmaker in this team. And funny enough, the guy I'd recommend is actually listed as a centre-half. Yeah, it's Bazoa, uh, a young 24-year-old, 76-rated centre-back, right now playing for Vitesse. You can get him for under the valuation of 8.5 mil as his deal's up coming at the end of the year. But Bazoa, despite being listed as a centre-half, he's got the height, don't get me wrong, and the strength as well. To me, you look at his range of stats and you'll see them in just a moment's time once again. He's so much better playing further forward. A centre-half, he can fill in there if required. But going forward is where he'll be at his base. He has stats are, you know, physically very strong, high-low work rates. Again, defensively, he's not that bad. But again, you look at his dribbling stats here. 82 ball control, 76 dribbling, 82 long pass, 79 short pass, decent stamina. And not too bad, I would say, when in the final third of the pitch as well. You can either convert this guy as a natural CM and have him as a box-to-box, -box, which I believe will be a really good position for him with his decent defensive stats as well. Or you can play him slightly further forward in the attacking midfield role. Really, the choice is yours. I would say personally though, keep uh, Koku and uh, the Norwegian centre mid together through the heart in the middle and convert Bazoa to CAM. He can fill in at centre back and again his defensive stats aren't bad but with the low defensive work rate, uh, you know, and again some really good passing and dribbling stats, 
I would say phase and further forward and converting from a CB to either a CM or a CAM. Uh, now I would recommend a new centre half with fine order as well. Now you've got Sanaisai, the uh, Argentine who wears the armband in the first 11 for Feyenoord. He's a really, really great Argentine defender, and they've brought in someone new to pair with him as well. But other than that, there's not much quality in the CB role, so what I would like to do is bring in a good young Dutch talent once again, just like we did with Bozoa. A couple of names on the short list here. It really depends what's the best value for money deal you can get. You'll notice for Tessa, a few players of deals come at the end of the year, so you can get them on cheap deals. But in the end, I also to go for the PSV Eindhoven centre-half. Armando Obispo. This guy is just 20, I think 22 or 23 years old with 73 as his starting overall as well. He probably won't go straight in the first 11 in the first season, but he's got 81 potential. So he'll grow into be a starter for you. Again, Trauner has just come in. So he'll be starting alongside Senesai uh, in the centre-back role. But this guy off the bench, he's better than the current backup centre-half you've got. And again, he's much younger with good potential as well. So yeah, I definitely recommend, uh, recommend Obispo another good young Dutch talent for this final side. The third signing I made as you'll see, I was looking for good value for money deals here because with final, you don't have much money to work with is this guy right here. He's one of my favourite players in this year's FIFA career mode and one of the absolute best bargains you can get. I recommend it for practically any FIFA career mode. It's Fabio Carvalho, uh, the young Fulham wonder kid, helping his side get promoted back to the Premier League for next season. As we know, he's going to join Liverpool, but in the game, you can still get him. 18 years old, 75 rated because his contract's up come the end of the year you can get him for under the valuation around 5 to 5.5 mil that's what we pay for the young uh, dual nationality Portuguese uh, English playmaker if you will and with Fabio Carvalho what I would recommend doing is playing this guy on the wing now one of the reasons I love Carvalho is because he can play practically anywhere in the final third of the pitch I personally believe he can play deep with decent passing stats but ultimately I think he'd be a little bit wasted playing as the natural CM in this team so what I'd recommend doing is playing him as a winger in this side. You can have him in the attacking midfield spot if you want in replace of Bazaar, but personally, I'll put him on the right-hand side of the wing. Reese Nelson, on loan from Arsenal, really good young pacey talent. But what I'll do with Nelson is put him off, uh, put him on the bench and bring him on as an impact sub in late-game situations. And again, because Carvalho is so versatile, great dribbler, good pace, you can play him right through the middle or on the wing. Even as a false nine, I think Carvalho would do pretty well with his range of stats, but in my opinion, I think as a right winger in this team, that's where you'll get the best out of Fabio Carvalho. So for more sales with Feyenoord, uh, you'll notice there's quite a big squad here with Feyenoord, but a lot of it is just young talent. One player I wouldn't recommend selling unless you get a natural bid to begin with. That's Brian Nilsson. Uh, this is a Dutch striker who's now in his 30s. He's not bad at 75 overall, and he's just as good as the man you've got in on loan right now. But as he, his, as he is in his 30s and 75 rated, he's only going to get worse. If you do get a bid for him and you can get around 6.5 to 7 mil, I wouldn't be against cashing it. In. Really, it's personal preference. And looking for a young striker that's not much worse off now, but it's going to get a lot better in the future. And the two names I would recommend here are both players that deals that come the end of the year, which means you can get in front of the valuation. You've got Jose Macias, uh, a young striker from South America, but also this guy, Eddie Enketia uh, from Arsenal. This guy is a great budget striker to buy in Fever Crew, and you can get him for around £3 million, which is dirt cheap. We spent three and a quarter to bring him away from the Emirates Stadium to Rotterdam and of course with Reese Nelson here on loan I really like that fit as well and Ketia coming in to join an Arsenal bro but yeah Eddie and Ketia is a really great bargain by this year's FIFA crew for free to around three and a half mil that's all you need to pay for him in the first season and whilst his overall in my opinion is criminally low at 72 personally I think he should be a little bit higher rated than that maybe that's just me but I think he should be around 75 76 overall he's a really quick striker with a great starting finishing attack attacking position and ball control stat as well and that's only going to improve over time if you can improve the strength and the jumping as well at 5 foot 11 he's not too small he'll be a really great impact sub for you coming off the bench with the pace he's got in late game situations because he's in his early 20s he's only going to get better as well so once you've sold Nielsen come the end of the season and Ketia will be better than the veteran you've just sold so yeah and is a great bargain by 
and definitely worth picking up if you do indeed sell uh, Nielsen up top. So as you'll see, we did change the positions of Carvalho and Bazoa as well. Uh, once again, Fabio, I love him because you can play him all in the final third, wherever you want. Inside forward on the left, natural wing on the right, right through the middle as an attacking mid, or even as a false nine, I think it'd do well. And Bazoa, we changed from CB to CAM. Once again, you look at the stats here, I do think personally with Bazoa, with most teams, I would recommend using him as a box-to-box, -box, because again, his, his shooting stats aren't too bad. So popping up on the edge of the area, like Frank Lamb, Lampard used to do. He he can do that role. His finishing stats might not be the best, but they're not the lowest either. And I think with the uh, the dribbling and the decent defensive stats too, a box to box would be a great role for him if you train his defensive work rate up from low to eventually high. But in this final team, as they are playing a 4-3-3 attack and have one CAM, I think with Bizarre's range of stats and his great passing ability as well, I think he'd be an excellent creative player in this team in the CAM role. So with final, we had a little bit of money left over towards the end of the transfer budget. I decided to bring in a couple of young talents as well. Uh, Jaden Braff was the first player I signed. Young Dutch talent right now in Manchester City. 18 years old. And because he's at a club which is a powerhouse and they've got far better options in that position right now, it means you can get him for under the valuation. It'll cost you just over a million to get him. But he's a great young talent. You won't play much in the first couple of seasons. But with 84 potential, he's going to be a star in your final team after about four or five years. And the final signing I made was this guy right here. It's Martin van der Voet of KRC Genk, the young Belgian talent. Just 19 years old. As we know, he's agreed to join RB Leipzig in real life. He'll arrive in Germany in 2024. But in the game, there's no future transfer agreed, so you can get him for your club of choice. So we signed him for, I think it was around 3 point something million plus Marciano. Like I mentioned, there are a few players in this final team that have been signed for season one. You won't be able to sell if you put them on a transfer, but you can swap them out. That's what we do with Marciano. He was signed from Hibernian in the summer. You won't be able to sell him in the first season, but you can swap him out. Of course, Farnold have got like five, six goalkeepers here already. You don't you don't need that many, but you can get rid of one of the aging players and bring in a younger talent for the future. That's what we do with Van der Ver, 84 potential. He's better than Marciano and much younger and much better for the future as well. So once we sold uh, the three uh, players with Farnold here, Turnstra, Linson, uh, and also Nago as well, you'll see we signed six players for just over 25 mil in the end we had a net loss of 13 million when you look at the players coming in here great potential for the future Fabio Carvalho of 86 Van der Voet and Braff with 84 Obispo off the bench with 81 and then Basoa your new attacking midfielder of 80 and then Ketia with 79 as well that's more than good enough for the Dutch league a really solid crop of players coming in some great young Dutch talent and some good young talent overall as well improving this final team for now and for the future as well so with final as you'll see our objectives once again reasonably tough but definitely doable objectives in the first season we would simulate the end of the campaign and see how we get on with final in our very first season could we get those objectives well as you can see I had to come back early because this was interesting. We won the cup. We beat PSV Eindhoven by five goals to four in a shootout. And as you'll see in the Europa Conference League, knocked out a really strong Real Betis side. Then we had Roma, like fine, I've got in real life. Beat them in the semis to take on Leon in the Europa Conference League final. Just like Farnold have got to in real life. Question was, could we win a double and potentially a treble in season one? Yes, we could beat Leon in the final. I had to stop the simulation straight away because I wanted to capture the um, the graphic you see in the new screen. But look at this as well in the, uh, the Aaron Vs. We drew two of our final three games. And that saw us fail to win the title. PSV won the Arid V's four points clear us. So we did finish runners up, and that's good enough for the board. That is a Champions League spot in the Dutch league, and that's good enough for the board. We only lost one time in the entire season, only one defeat all campaign long in the league. And now we not drew two of our final three league games. We might have won a treble in season one. In the end, it was a double, but a runners up position in the uh, Arid V's, that's good enough for the board. It's a Champions League spot. And as you'll see in the Dutch Cup, we won that beating PSV on penalties and the Europa Conference League. Well, what an incredible campaign it was in the inaugural season of the Europa Conference League. Topping our group, undefeated, making it through the last 16 against Union Berlin, who we also had in the group. Then taking out Real Batiste in the quarterfinals and then taking out Roma as well and beating Lyon in the final. I've got to say... 
That's a really impressive run. And out of all the who to sign for it, oh, that looks class, doesn't it? Out of all the who to sign for episodes I've done this season, I think this is probably one of the best we've had in terms of a finish. We hit all three of our objectives, every single one of them, and I really like how the team developed in season one as well. You can see Bizarre grow straight up to 80 overalls, our new playmaker, and Ketchy is now in the first 11 at 76 overall. Carvalho now 76 as well. And as for the young talent on the bench in the reserves, Van de Vuur up to 72, Obese up to 76 and the good youngsters to watch out for in the reserves as well including Braff with 67 overall now this is such a fun final side and I think a lot of people you know are reluctant to do teams outside of the traditional top five European leagues Premier League, Ligue 1, uh, La Liga, Bundesliga and Serie A as well but honestly there are some absolute gems outside of the top five European leagues still in Europe and the Dutch league is a really fun league to manage in as well it's got a uh, a really good few teams right at the top with Ajax, of course, the most successful team in Eredivisie's history. PSV Eindhoven, and of course, Final decide that we used here as well. Um, it's a really fun division to manage in. Final have got some fantastic kits as well. And again, because there's only two spots for a Champions League position as well, right from the very first season, you've really got to be on it if you want to be in the Champions League next season as well. But they've got some great young talent. It's a really, really fun team to use. We added to that in this game as well. And if you looking for an RTG this is a great team to use outside the traditional top five European leagues but some fantastic kits a rich history a team known for developing really solid young talent I'll definitely recommend giving final to go I had a lot of fun rebuilding their side selling some of the fringe players and bringing in some good young talent as well I definitely recommend them it's a long RTG but it's well worth challenge but that will end today's episode of your time for guys big fan you for watching hope you have enjoyed it if you have done please do drop a like most love to you all have a fantastic day and i'll see you for the next episode of who to sign for very soon